Greetings to everyone out there in Chapo land. This is Chapo Trap House. I am Will Meneker. Joining me, as always, are Matt Christman and Felix Biederman. It's Monday, January 23rd. Let's kick this working, re- working week off right with some Chapo. God, I almost got out of that intro without fucking it up. <laughs> oh, One of these right. days. Yeah. All right. Here's where I'd like to begin this week. Um, I know that... Uh, I have said on this show in the very recent past that I was beginning to suspect or even declare that one Donald J. Trump is, quote, unquote, washed, that he's had it, that he doesn't have the fire in his belly anymore. You know, I think it was when he was selling NFTs that aren't even NFTs, when he was selling baseball cards of himself as an astronaut, Uh, his absolute failure to start referring to Ron DeSantis as gay Ron it was speaking, I was just like, I, are his best days behind him? Well, listeners, uh, I would have thought that until this weekend at the funeral of one diamond of diamond and silk, we witnessed greatness once again. This was like seeing Tom Brady lead a fourth quarter, you know, like a, a game winning drive in the fourth quarter to just give you a little bit of that old Trump magic. Fellas, did you see the great one and his eulogy performance for Diamond of Diamond and Silk. Yes, this was like the uh, final George Foreman title run. This was (laughs) beautiful. This was, I mean, I think we all have favorite parts. My favorite part was the part where I saw a little bit of myself in it. Um, It was when he got, he first got up uh, during uh, the first part of his speech and he went, Wow, uh, people told me this would be like 15 to 20 minutes, but uh, <laughs> apparently we're going yes. three hours. I don't believe, you know, they told me, I said, give me a little time, because I have a lot of people waiting for me back in a place called Palm Beach, Florida. They said, give me a little time. What do you think it'll take? Oh, about 15, 20 minutes, sir, in and out. I said, well, it could take longer. This is a little longer than 15 minutes, right? <laughs> no, that, okay. That, that was great. That, a little bit, a little bit longer. But a little bit longer, folks. <laughs> and he it's goes, like, and I, like that's what that's what makes him great. Is yeah. most people will kind of have a thought like that, but due yep. to social conditioning <laughs> and like basic morality, their own like their own inner voice will go, "You piece of shit! Like, why are you thinking that? Like, someone just died." <laughs> but he'll like he'll just sit. There's no filtration. There's no second guessing of it. Of course, that's the first thing he brings up because it's the first thing he feels. Yeah, he's the greatest. And the audience, they get, they laughed a little. They were like, ha yeah, it's sure, yeah. been a long time. You're, yes, sir. Sure. Yeah, we're sorry for boring you. Taking the opportunity at a funeral as you were giving the eulogy for someone who's supposedly a, a close friend of yours um, to complain about how long their funeral is. And he was going, <laughs> I told them, I told them, I said, you know, 15, 20 minutes. Does this feel like 15 or 20 minutes to you? And he goes, I've got a lot of people waiting for me back in. Palm Beach, Florida. <laughs> okay, that that was, and then like I mean, there, there's footage, there's footage of him sitting on, on the dais, looking bored as shit, like checking his watch and shit as other people are speaking, just eyes rolling in the back of his head. But the other, the other really, the other bit of Trump greatness at this uh, memorial service was him doing the the uh, his uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. This is the first time hearing of this about Silk. Uh, we have another star who is. Equal to, but she stepped up and she is different. I'm, I'm serious. I thought I knew them both. I didn't. I knew, I knew Diamond, but I didn't know Silk at all. I just learned about Silk. You're fantastic. You're going to carry on beyond, beyond anybody's wildest imagination. At her sister's funeral, he claims that he was like, and and I just I'm learning about this for the first time. There's another one. It's Silk. It's Silk, and she's <laughs> yeah. gonna. She's and like Matt, we were talking about this. Like there is no way he ever interacted with any of them just individually. They were always no. diamond and silk. We saw them open for him at CPAC. Yeah. And he's claiming so at this woman's deal. sister's funeral that he's never met her. And is just <laughs> with, after she had they got previously. The other, was she standing behind uh, diamond? Is that what happened? <laughs> well, apparently yeah. uh, silk during her eulogy for her sister uh, rattled off all of the great times that they had together with Trump. And then he presumably listens to this or his brain is just like left his head, you know, Homer Simpson style when Ned Flanders is telling him about apple cider. And then he's just like, Silk, Silk, this is the first time I've met you, but you're going to do great. You're going to do great things. You're going to be the new diamond. 
he said, um, your future is going to be brighter than anyone's imagination. <laughs> like she's a, a 18 year old who just barely got into USC. Like I, he's <laughs> incredible. Diamond and Silk were also, they were at the White House and given more decorations than Audie Murphy <laughs> during the Trump presidency. I think they have visited the White House more times than any two pairs of individuals ever in human history who aren't like, yeah. you know, Joint Chiefs of Staff or something. <laughs> the idea that like he never met what like it's I don't know how he got there. I, I legitimately don't. But um it just it's one of those things. It's one of those little 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 parts of his game that makes me say Ron DeSantis just it's not going to be him. It's I still don't X know if it's going to be Trump, but it's not going to be Ron. Cuz it, it's a it's a chaotic X factor that nobody else can replicate because nobody else is programmed that way. They, they're, there's like a restrictor plate in your brain of most people including <laughs> yes. people who are going to run for office, including Ron uh the suck ass. To not complain about how long <laughs> the service yeah. is at a, <laughs> okay. at a televised funeral. Let's and put it, yeah, put it into political terms. What is the thing that made Elrond the fat ass vote for TPP versus Trump, who innovated a new presidential economic policy of like guaranteeing a bull market for at least like three, four years? By threatening to dox the head of the Federal Reserve. <laughs> it's convention versus lack of convention. Yep. It's like uh, like in sports terms, I would say Trump has that thing, that thing that's in Anderson Silva's brain that tells him to do a front snap kick. Yeah. You know, the thing that tells John Jones to try a prayer choke for the first time in a cage in a title fight. He's he's special. Ron DeSantis may he may have all the fundamentals, but what Trump has goes beyond fundamentals. Look, Felix. There are great players. It's what we've always said. There are great players, and then there are immortal players. A great player may go to a funeral they don't want to go to, to a person they don't really like and don't really know, but they'll do it to maintain appearances and to be a good politician. An immortal player will do that same thing and then loudly complain about the dead person and her funeral at the funeral, <laughs> on stage, giving a eulogy, televised, recorded. That's and an immortal player. And, you know, Matt, we were talking about this, like, the way the audience just ate it up, yep. and they just they, this is this is what traditional analysts don't understand about Trump's greatness and his immor immortal legend status. The more he treats the people who believe in him like the dumb, thoughtless pigs they are, the more he acts like a rude, thoughtless pig to them. The as you said, Matt, it's about permission. In the figure of the leader, it gives them permission to be the version of themselves that they've always known they were and always wanted to be but heretofore no politician certainly not Ron suck as is giving anyone <laughs> look he's giving you permission to to hate gay people and trans people but he's not giving you per per permission to be a rude thoughtless pig to the people closest to you in your life like those that would show up to your funeral yeah the ultimate uh license and he's he's giving you the keys to fucking uh, uh emotional ferrari just go out there and open her up. <laughs> Emotional Ferrari, yeah. That's exactly it. You know, there are there, it's like the Autobahn. There are no speed limits no on speed the limits, baby. Just, just, see, it, we'll see what you can do. Um, but I, I do want to talk a little bit more about uh, Diamond uh, Diamond's funeral. First of all, was I aware that they were sisters? I just thought I they don't, were friends. I, I don't think I knew they were actually sisters. Yeah, I, I didn't know they were related to each other. And I have to confess, I, I do. I, I'm, Diamond was the one who did all of the talking, right? Like, yes. Silk, Silk was is just, really. That was what so, made it yeah, extra funny when Trump said, her, her future greater than you can imagine. Because Silk is the one who literally just went, that's right. Yep. <laughs> she yeah. was just the hype man. Like, that was it. Yeah, she was a very um, OJ the Juice Man type role. <laughs> 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 she was like, she was like the uh, Bez from Happy Mondays, but for um, yeah. conservative uh, rave culture, just shaking those maracas on stage. Um, I just, I do want to read a little bit of coverage of the uh, the Diamond Funeral because it sounded like quite an event, though. This is a uh, courtesy of uh, Zachary uh, Patrizzo in uh, the Daily Beast. Um, he writes. Trump world figures converged at Lynette Diamond Hardaway's remembrance ceremony on Saturday afternoon to celebrate the life of the pro-Trump pundit who died suddenly at 51. But the memorial took a dark turn as her sister suggested a nefarious plot behind her death. 
Diamond Sister, half of the Diamond and Silk duo, Rochelle Sil- Silk Richardson, addressed the crowd at the Crown Theater in Fayetteville, North Carolina, and appeared to fall back into her old anti-vaxxer ways. Quote, Instead of asking if Americans are vaxxed or unvaxxed, the real question to ask is, are Americans being poisoned? She asked the pro-Trump crowd filled with friends and family. In the wild, when they want to depopulate and sterilize a large group of animals, they usually inject one animal, and that one animal will infect the rest of the animals, Silk said, suggesting without evidence that the COVID-19 vaccine creates harm. People are dropping dead around here, and nobody is talking about it. They are dropping dead suddenly and unexpectedly. So what I like about this and what 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 Silk is implying here is, look, when when Diamond uh, died, um, a lot of people, you know, like the obvious question needs to be asked, did she die of COVID despite, you know, due to the fact of how anti-vax she was? Or the question is, did she die of the vaccine, which would bring up the question, why was she pitching all this anti-vax stuff if she herself got the vaccination? Silk brilliantly has decided to like has found a way out of this um, this uh, this trap Pause, you know, caused by the death of her sister, which is that she definitely didn't die of COVID. She definitely didn't get the vaccine, but due to vaccine shedding, due to protein shedding, which is the thing these people are obsessed with, the, any per- person who is vaccinated who comes in contact with an unvaccinated person spreads the vaccine like a virus. So, yep. uh, Diamond okay, definitely Okay, so what's the of point the of being unvaccinated? <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, there is none. It's not helping There's your ass. Yeah. <laughs> no, you're not owned. That's it. Like yeah, you, yeah, exactly. you die a martyr. You you never bent the knee. You enter right wing. You enter OAN and, and Valhalla. You get you get yes. to hang out with with Dan Bongino. I wonder if there's like um a part of like conservative Twitter that's like oh so I guess like some people have decided that social murder is okay. Like if you <laughs> if you got vaccinated, you know, just so you could like get this over with, it's okay to like go out and go on yeah. airplanes and shed your vaccine on people <laughs> yes. and kill them. Well, Felix, I mean, this, this is what I'm thinking, like, certainly in light of the resurgence of these videos of people pretending to have, like, you know, Bell's palsy after getting the vaccine. I, I, I did see one woman recently that was like claimed that the uh, fir- her first vaccine dose gave her um, tachycardia or something. It put her into tachycardia, which is <laughs> and then she got the second vaccine. She got the second uh, shot after nearly dying. And she says both vaccines have badly harmed my health. And in the video, she's like, her hand is shaking as she's just taking a sip from a beer. So it's just like, still drinking, though. <laughs> still drinking. Yeah. And what I love about this is, like, your, Felix, your point about social murder is that it does seem that, like, Matt, you've described this as the airborne toxic event for our times. Is it now everyone has a... No, we, all, we all live every day of our lives aware of the fact that our death exists. And it is out there waiting to greet us with the aspect of surprise. But now we have a ready-made answer for why we die, for, for all of us. It is either you're going to die of COVID, long COVID, or the vaccine. One of the other... Yeah, it, this is America. And the one thing we will not take from you, no matter what else, uh, whatever, what other liberties and dignities are stripped from life in America, the one thing we will not take from you is your fake choices, your, 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 uh, your, the fake narrative that you get to engage in. You get to pick... You get to pick one of one way to understand the world, one way to understand why life expectancy has like dropped 10, 10 years in the last two. You've got you can't have one answer that 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 raises too many deeper questions. If there's two answers, then you can just play with that shit all day like a fucking uh, like a ball and a cup. It's great. All, all I'll say is whether you are going to die of covid or the covid vaccine, regardless the, our deaths all have a they have they have a name and a date out there, so we no longer have to greet it with surprise. We will know exactly why we're dying, and what 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 option you choose, what door you choose to walk through, will largely uh, depend on your uh, po- political point of view. So there's that. Uh, there is some other good stuff from the uh, Diamond Funeral. Uh, c- continuing on the article, it says. In a blink of an eye, she is now in the presence of the Lord Jesus Christ, Trump-loving pastor Mark Burns declared. I believe without a shadow of a doubt, Diamond is talking to Jesus, and she is saying, Jesus, please make sure that Donald J. Trump is the next president of the United States of America. Uh, I like this moment um, from her sister's eulogy for her. She says, and another secret about Diamond. She had a boyfriend. Yes, that's right. She, and she had a boyfriend, and oh my God, we would talk about him all the time. His name? 
President Donald J. Trump. Yes, yes, yes. President Donald J. Trump. That was her boyfriend. Uh, ham added that Diamond's side piece was Mike Lindell. Oh, I guess that wasn't uh, Silk. That was a ham. But her side piece, her boyfriend was Donald Trump, and her side piece, that's right, Mike Lindell. Uh, but apparently, no, this is Silk was uh, mad, uh, at, apparently, at the uh, North Carolina Sheriff's Department. This is interesting. Uh, and as Silk says, to the Hoke County Sheriff's Department, you have a rotten apple in the bunch, Silk said. While the body is still warm on the kitchen floor, you don't overstep the next of kin, then try to barge into my home that I pay the bills for illegally with no warrant to retrieve my sister's dead body. You don't push yourself onto someone's onto someone and then say, don't touch me, she continued. Silk, who has long called for handcuffs to be removed from police, then pledged to file a complaint against the North Carolina Police Department ASAP, adding, just because you are dressed in blue doesn't mean you get to abuse the power you think you have. So I, I applaud. Uh, I applaud Silk for coming. I, I got to say that I, I was surprised out of all the things we could remove from uh, police officers, handcuffs wasn't the one that I would have chosen first. But uh, I mean, I, I guess like there's there's some some beef over the claiming the body or that the sheriff's department was rude. To, I can't imagine a North Carolina sheriff's deputy being rude to anyone. Yeah, especially not a black woman. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. But she says she's she's got they've got a rotten apple in their bunch down there in the uh, Hoke County Sheriff's Department. It's tough when your desire to uh, support the boys in blue and your need to get somebody fired when you're pissed off collide like that. Well, this uh, this stuff tells nicely with uh, the next thing I wanted to talk about on today's show. On our last episode, I did a little we did a little uh, uh, update about uh, news involving the armed forces and uh, what they're up to. Um, if you're in special forces at Fort Bragg, the answer is trafficking drugs and human beings for fun and profit. But I just have two stories here today about uh, law enforcement. And the first, of course, deals with uh, sheriff's departments and I, you know, I share Silk's frustration with them, but uh, there's just a, a couple articles I'm going to you know, try to summarize as best I can about the, the rise of something called constitutional sheriffs. You thought regular sheriffs were good. Where do you meet the constitutional variety that is uh, now cropping up all over the country? We've, yeah, we have brought this up before. But this has long been a part of the, conser- the modern conservative movement. Um, I think I've told this anecdote before, but uh, in 2009... Um, a friend's cousin's girlfriend, that degree of a separation, rush into the room to excitedly tell all three of us that sheriffs were rising up to arrest Obama for enforcing gun control. <laughs> but for some reason in the last 12 years, part of the like modern conservative belief has been that like sheriffs have an authority like above the president. Yeah. It's part of like the Magna Carta or something or the Articles of Confederation. I'm not sure. But yeah, it is. It's a big part of their lore now. Uh, well, yeah, there, there is a, a one article here. Uh, which, sorry, let me just find it real quick. Yeah, uh, quote: These sheriffs say they're more powerful than the president. Now they're targeting elections. This is by uh, Jessica Pishko for uh, Reveal News. Uh, I just read a little here. It says, wearing a brilliant purple colored shirt and a black cowboy hat, Richard Mack stood before rows of chairs in a church gymnasium. A black and white picture of Jesus with the crown of thorns over the basketball hoop. Mac leads a network of sheriffs across the country, the so-called constitutional sheriffs movement, who believe their powers supersede those of the president and the Supreme Court. Under his leadership, they've embraced the false narrative that the 2020 election was stolen from former President Donald Trump and are pledging to use their positions to do something about it. There are millions of people in this country who call our Constitution evil, he said, on the verge of tears. He said it was part of their scheme to destroy America and replace our Constitution with their socialistic agenda. So sheriff's departments uh, continue to... uh, I mean, you know, it's, I, when we talk about uh, defunding the police or uh, we, as we've suggested on on this program, uh, at the very least, getting rid of sheriffs. If we have to be have police forces, uh, sheriffs, um, this, this seems to be like an antiquated uh, form of law. What the hell are we doing? <laughs> it's, get these but, guys out of here. You know, confiscate uh, Silk, their halberds. <laughs> Silk wants to get rid of their handcuffs. I would like to get rid of, um, uh, I don't know, the constitutional authority, which supersedes that of the president and voters in the states that they live in. I mean, that's just the fact that they've got guns and there's nobody else around. I mean, at the end of the day, that's the only real authority that counts. I mean, unless it's a feast day. (laughs) 
The so-called constitutional sheriff's movement is rooted in a far-right ideology promulgated by the virulently racist Posse Posse Comitatus Comitatus movement started by a white supremacist named William Potter Gale in the 1970s. A core tenet of Posse Comitatus was a reverence for county-level law enforcement, specifically elected sheriffs. According to the ideology, a sheriff could interpose or block federal and state laws so long as those laws were deemed unconstitutional. Posse Comitatus ideals spread throughout the West, inspiring sovereign citizen and militia movements. So, yeah, this is uh, this is what's, what's, what's going on in uh, sheriff's departments is that not, it's not enough that they can just um, get any job they want for whatever fail nephew or cousin that they have. Now they, uh, you know, can overturn laws if they deem them unconstitutional or socialistic. And, you know, like the article goes on to talk about how they are demanding the right to interrogate electors and vote counters on election day and they, they, there's an anecdote about in one county that trump won two to one the sheriff like didn't understand that and was demanding to interrogate all of the people who counted the votes in this county in his county even though trump won it by more than half no nah, but not enough clearly they were trying to shave down his margin to, uh, to humiliate him <laughs> this is uh, another highlight from this article it says in another note to Mac, uh, this guy, uh, one of the constitutional sheriffs, a guy named <laughs> Dar, wait, hold on a second, uh, Dar Leaf of Barry County, a rural square of land. Outside sure, of why not? Oh, wait, Dar Leaf. Is, is he one of the first lawyers? <laughs> <laughs> uh, in another note it's to Mac. fucking ca- like, caveman lawyer name. <laughs> what was it? What was it like being around when language was developed? <laughs> He's a bastard from the uh, the forest kingdom, Dar Leaf. And another note to Mac, uh, Leaf included a presentation called The American Sheriff at the Common Law, co-written by Brett Allen Winters, a self-styled American geologist, Bible translator, common lawyer, author, and teacher of comparative law. Winters Someone studies- should tell him the Bible's been translated already. It's fine. <laughs> we know what it says. He doesn't need to do that. I just, I, I love all these cranks because I love all of like the... Um, like, like whenever you see someone's Twitter bio and they list all their areas of expertise, I like that he concludes American geologist. Like, is the study of geology different in Europe or something? Or is he, he, he only studies American? He only studies granite? American rocks. He doesn't give a shit about any foreign rocks. Fuck them all. Fuck off okay. with that. American okay, rocks trans- only. Translator and American. Ge- like, okay, that this is telling me Mormon, or at least like Mormon <laughs> oh, impulses, yeah. right? Yeah. Like, a yeah, goofy yeah. Your name you're, too. Yeah, you're finding rocks that prove that, like, you know, yeah, uh, the Iroquois Confederacy are Jewish. They're, like, <laughs> uh, Jewish and American, and Jesus Christ was here 2,000 years ago. And you're translating, like, new parts of the Bible that are exactly what your, like, uh, HOA bylaws are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, th- th- that's one aspect of uh, the law. Uh, the next story I want to I want to turn to right now uh, comes courtesy of uh, ProPublica, and uh, this touches on another thing uh, that I know we've uh, discussed on the show in the past, which is that like so many of the forensic sciences that you see um, touted on shows like CSI and Law and Order, Special Victims Unit, things like blood spatter analysis, bite mark analysis, handwriting analysis, are perhaps based in like some sort of scientific veracity, but are in, in almost all c- cases cheat codes for prosecutors well uh they've come up with a new form of junk science to uh put people in jail for life for murder and it's the 911 calls that distressed family members and relatives make upon discovering the body of their loved one that can now be analyzed by by a crank a crackpot uh sheriff or cop or something who has a claim for himself a scientific method to prove the guilt or innocence of a party based on the 911 call that they make in an emergency like what they're like they're able to scientifically determine whether they're faking or not yeah so uh listen to this uh <laughs> we've got dar leaf dar leaf uh the man behind this <laughs> new scientific method his name is tracy harpster <clears throat> a deputy police chief from suburban dayton ohio uh, he says he has a business to promote, a miracle to method to determine when 911 callers are actually guilty of the crimes they are reporting. Quote, I know what a guilty father, mother, or boyfriend sounds like, he once said. <laughs> it's like, I mean, first of all, I completely, I completely trust him. I mean, Tracy Harpster, 
That is not a name that you adopt after killing a man during the gold rush. <laughs> <laughs> this is a trustworthy moniker. Um, Harpster tells police and prosecutors around the country that they can do the same. Such linguistic detection is possible, he claims, if you know how to analyze callers' speech patterns, their tone of voice, their pauses, their word choice, even their grammar. Stripped of context and misplaced word as innocuous as hi or please or somebody can reveal a murderer on the phone. In 2016, Missouri prosecutor Leah Askey wrote Harpster an effusive email bluntly detailing how she skirted legal rules to exploit his methods against unwitting defendants. Of course, this line of research is not, quote, recognized as a science in our state, Askey wrote, explaining that she had sidestepped hearings that would have been required to assess the message's legitimacy. She said she disguised the 911 call analysis in court by, quote, getting creative without calling it science. <laughs> you know, getting hmm. a little nutty with it. Looks like the liberal arts are useful. <laughs> For the Vibes based criminology. <laughs> For the past decade, Harpster has traveled the country quietly sowing his methods into the justice system case by case, city by city, charging up to $3,500 for his eight hour class, which is typically paid for with tax dollars. Oh, hell yeah. They're teaching a bunch of cops this shit. This is awesome. They should, they, should, they should give him like a wand that he can teach these guys how to use, something like a, like a dousing rod or something. Oh, I can't wait for like cop YA for that to be a genre. For like a book about a book about like a fourteen year old boy who <laughs> probably has a name like Tracy Shoeless or whatever this guy's name is, <laughs> uh, who like he's able he's able to like use the nine one one crime veracity technique without ever having taken the course, and that tells <laughs> everyone that he's like the chosen cop, like a Harry <laughs> Potter <laughs> YA genre series of books for cops. He was born with a Punisher birthmark. <laughs> yeah. Yes. <laughs> I sort of like, uh, just give you an example of, um, of Harpster and his method. Uh, uh, it says Harpster, then 43, had spent most of his career with the Moraine, Ohio Police Department. Moraine, population 6,500, is an unlikely crucible for a newfangled homicide investigative method. And Harpster is an unlikely figure to be the one who forged it. The city averages less than one murder a year. <laughs> <laughs> but all those but, murders are solved by him listening to a 911 tape and going like ah okay. no nope, he's lying so like okay imagine this like you, you just got discovered the the body of you know uh your business partner a uh, co-worker lover just a anyone on the street you make a nine a frantic 911 call uh just just keep this in mind <laughs> listener if you ever have to make a 911 call so it says, based on patterns he heard in the tapes, Harpster said he was able to identify certain indicators that correlated with guilt and others with innocence. For instance, huh? In response to a dispatcher's question is an indicator of guilt in Harpster's system. So was an isolated, please. He identified 20 such indicators and then counted how often they appeared in his sample of guilty calls. For instance, uh, the widow uh, on a 911 call said the word blood, for example. And that's a guilty indicator. Yeah. Saying blood on a phone call, you better believe that's a guilty, that's a murderer calling you. Whereas uh, bleeding, however, is not a sign of guilt. She said somebody at different points, which shows lack of commitment. Witnesses to a crime scene should be able to report their observations clearly, Harpster and Adams wrote. She was inappropriately polite because she said, I'm sorry and thank you. She interrupted herself, which wastes valuable time and may add confusion. She tried to divert attention by saying, God, who would do this? Harpster and Adams commented, this is curious and unexpected question. If you're not tactical enough, you probably killed your husband. Yep. You're not you're not doing you're not doing <laughs> you're not tactical phone uh, conversation. You're clearly doing that on purpose because you should know how to do this. You should know how to call the you should know how to call 911 in an emergency. A thing that happens to uh, uh, the people every single day. It's certainly not a a traumatic and uh, unlikely event that ru ruptures somebody's life. So yes, uh, continuing, uh, the report notes that <laughs> this, um, the, the 911 call analysis system has been used in the prosecutions of probably hundreds of people by now. So then this is just that we're aware of. I just want to read a little bit more here. Uh, in class, there's a projector screen with the course title. Is the caller the killer? The bold red font looks like dripping blood. <laughs> Oh my he's, god! He's including <laughs> pixel art, including gifs and stuff, uh, little wingdings and stuff. Yeah, you have uh, to make you have to make it look like a goosebumps book to like keep cops engaged. 
Oh my god. This is <laughs> so are, fucking good books. I like we really should just like create a nation for cops because this is like it, like everything we read about cops, like it's so fucking funny. They're such funny types of people. Like I know that like white women are like the go to people to make fun of, but this is sort of like everyone now. Yeah. Everyone is insane and like believes that they have supernatural powers to some extent. And this is like how cops do it. But then you're reminded, yeah, they're probably cumulatively going to use this to ruin hundreds of thousands of people's lives over my (laughs) lifetime. Uh, So the red font, which looks like dripping blood, he walks attendees through the indicators of guilt on a checklist that he and Adams invented called the cops scale for for cops. That stands for considering offender probability in statements. (laughs) It's a one-page worksheet. They copyright it. Cop scale, don't lie. Harper's Harpster has told his students, boys do. So, like, what, is, is he lecturing cops or like like a teenage girl before going to the junior prom? <laughs> okay, he claims he claims that one in three people who call nine one one to report a death are actually murderers. <laughs> Oh my <laughs> fucking god! What the fuck, dude? I think we found the source of the of the diamond and silk nine one one criminal. Yes. So she called, please help, please help my sister. And then that please uh, uh, ticked off on the the cop scale. They were like, better send the SWAT team. We've They're like, she did dirty ad libs. She killed her sister. <laughs> Um, in his thesis, Harpster originally said that the number was a one in five and attributed the figure to an unpublished study by a now dead detective and professor in Washington state. I found nothing to support either statistic. I just love the idea like one, like one in three people who called to report a murder are in fact the murderers themselves. I mean, like if there was even like a shred of accuracy to that, then like that would be a huge disincentive to ever call 911. Seriously, I mean, there's not a lot of good yeah. reasons to do it in the first place, <laughs> but like discovering a recently murdered body, I would think would be like a, an occasion in which you could reasonably uh, no, nope, <laughs> not the anymore. <laughs> just just walk away, not your nope. business, <laughs> even if it's a family member. Even just if go it's to like the your movies, wife hope somebody your else has to yeah, deal with just, it. <laughs> just walking in and out like Grandpa Simpson. Yeah, just, just like the nope. body of your spouse on the floor. Nope, not the only. Uh, sir, I'm. I'm I, they may ask for my address, and I'll pause for a half second, thereby condemning me to life in prison. <laughs> finding your dead, finding your dead wife, and then just like passive aggressively ordering DoorDash and like Amazon groceries. <laughs> Like Which is usually days. what a just guilty ho- person would do, right? Yeah, just, just, just like hoping that, like, the, the, yeah, just hoping that, like, the app slave will do it. <laughs> <laughs> and they'll call nine one one and go to prison for you. <laughs> oh man, but like, I, I guess, like, just like to take these two stories um, <laughs> together. It's like in one, you've got these like subliterate uh, American geologists claiming for themselves the right to supersede the authority of the United States government. Um, and then the other, you've got the, some fucking nobody, so the, Tracy Harpster, inventing a completely absolute hokum to, to just, as if prosecutors don't have enough fucking uh, to tools in their box to fucking put people in jail for murder. I mean, this yeah, is, pro- and the American prosecutor is playing in no-clip mode. Like, it is truly insane. But, um, yeah, this is, um, this is a new level. This is even worse than handwriting analysis, which I thought was my least favorite thing. But no, this is this is far worse. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. But oh, like, dear, you got to respect the grind to Tracy, Tracy Spring, Springsteen or whatever the fuck doesn't have to be a, a cop, a boring cop, uh, like shooting cats out of trees anymore. He gets to go to Radisson uh, uh, ballrooms uh, five times a week and and bill local law enforcement agencies hundreds of thousands of dollars to tell them how to identify fibs on the 911 uh, tape. It's genius. Yeah. Yeah. This is just this is so much more appealing than like litigating uh, people getting kicked out of Best Buy and like the usual jobs of a cop. (laughs) It's so much better if you if you yeah have literal psychic powers. I love the detail from the story that um, <laughs> that the, uh, the the municipality of which he was police chief of aver- has is like six people and there's one murder a year and that's like on a bad year and he's acting like he's fucking Columbo. 
<laughs> just solving homicides every fucking week. Uh, uh, just one well, more well, it's thing. Preven- I, I it's don't preventative. Understand. It's preventative. <laughs> yeah. They're like, yeah. Like, do you think a criminal? Do you think criminals will act in the municipality? Like police by the most psychic cop in America, the cop yeah, that teaches other cops magic. Yeah, that's why uh, the nine one one calls have plummeted completely in that town. No one's calling nine one one. Corpses uh, found just in the street, though, that has jumped to a thirty year high. People just like. They just kick him down the road and wait for the garbage man to find him. And then, like, well, there was no 911 call, so uh, uh, the coroner determined the call of death was falling on a knife repeatedly. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's just uh, a, a few things of what law enforcement are up to when they're not um, <laughs> just uh, killing people. So, uh, aren't you worried about that virus? Is this, <laughs> Sheriff, I'm wearing a condom. <laughs> All right. So... We start looking at uh, this whole, the big picture here. Uh, and I like it when you guys start calling it what it is. Marxist movement, communist movement. I don't care how you, how you word it. Uh, I, I hate the uh, Wimmer sports anarchy and oligarchy. And uh, it, it's getting so maddening. And so many of these things that are coming out, uh, like, you know, they always say gun control because guns kill people. Well, guns don't kill people, do they? People kill people. Yeah. Then they're going to tell us the rebel flag's racist. Oh, Wow. I don't know if flag could be racist. The latest that they're coming out with now is they're trying to ban pool because you guys are hitting that white ball and into all the colors. And, uh, sorry, but that's it. Would that surprise you? All right, moving on now. Um, I, okay, I, I began the show talking about how um, my concern that there was no more greatness left in this world, that we were you know, suffering from a, a, a dearth of truly, mad, truly great, minds like achieving their best and it was not just trump at a uh, diamond's funeral this weekend it was um how should i describe this man um sort of like the job of the hut of sports writing uh <laughs> jason whitlock sort of like a sports sports reporter turned um conservative commentator who took it upon himself to explain um for his twitter audience the recent uh spat between uh, Ben Shapiro's Daily Wire and Steven Crowder. Now, I, if you guys follow this story, basically, this, this, was, this was a bit of a kerfuffle in the uh, conservative media sphere because apparently um, the, the Daily Wire uh, made an offer to Steven Crowder. to It was a four-year contract for worth $50 million that he angrily turned down and did like a live stream, like accusing them of being rhinos or something like that, or claiming that he would never sell out or whatever. And then uh, the Daily Wire CEO, this guy Jeremy Boring, released his response video. It's like the world's lamest rap beef imaginable. But yeah, he released the, a response the, video where yeah, he, he says, that like, oh, you've been working for all these other people your whole career. You've been like, you know, heavily, you're, you're an industry plant just like we are. Yeah, it's um, the, so the core of this is basically that like, in Steven Crowder's uh, contract with the Daily Wire, and I do think this is probably unique to him because he's probably the only one who needs this. Um, there's a clause that he makes less money if he like gets banned on YouTube. Yeah, because he's like shittier at dog whistle than Jordan Peterson or Ben Shapiro or like any of the other Daily Caller guys. He gets carried away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that is that is sort of at, at, at the heart of it. And um, I don't know for, for, you know, what is Steven Crowder's endgame? I think he probably saw how much Alex Jones was making as an independent operation and thought like all great tacticians do. Oh, I'm just going to do what he did, but with none of the problems. I'm not going to make <laughs> yeah. any of the mistakes. And also I'm going to be Napoleon talents. without. Yeah, I'm going to invade. I'm going to be Napoleon without invading Russia. I'll just do that. And he's he's. He's sort of giving himself uh, authentic conservative bona fides here. Yeah, he like he's the real guy. He's like he's he's the one who will no. tell the like it really is, not like those cucks at the Daily Wire. Yeah, I know. I was I like I mean, it's just to, to, to put it in context here. I was amused by this story because of how much shit uh, we get for uh, being all being billionaires or whatever, and it's just like fifty million dollars. Like, okay, listener. We have had a number of opportunities to lightly sell out, like, you know, sign a contract with a podcast network or make, you know, slightly, but like a significant amount of more money by having ads on the free shows or whatever. Listener, I'm not making a stone here. 
if the Daily Wire offered me a, fifth, a four-year contract worth $50 million, <laughs> I would be yucking it up with Andrew Clavin promoting the Gina Carano movie tomorrow. Smoking the cigar so, in the bo- in the in the man cave. <laughs> in, 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 yeah, exactly. In the the Daily Wire screening room, I'll be uh, sipping bourbon and having a cigar with the boys, talking about good old fashioned movies, the kind they don't make anymore. But it would uh, be so like, very anyway. hard for me to not do a podcast solely about how Israel is unfairly singled out. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, like uh. So there's like you know. Uh, bit of a bit of a beef here so but jason whitlock stepped into the breach to explain this beef to his audience but explain it in a very particular way he's going to explain it as he says here the discord animus and upheaval within the conservative media bubble highlighted by the feud between steven crowder and the daily wire can best be understood through a game of thrones lens yes now Mm -hmm. Fellas, now we're talking my language. Finally, we are all gambo experts here. You know, we we've read the books, seen the TV show, we know the lore here. So I I would just figure we could do an audit of this Jason Whitlock, in which he goes through all of the principal figures in the conservative and liberal current media landscape and uh, assigns them a gambo character. Starting with Stephen Crowder is Littlefinger. He believes chaos is a ladder. He knows winter slash war is coming. He correctly identified big tech as the White Walkers. In his mind, he gave Jeremy Boring, quote, Ned Stark, great advice. That's not what, like, Ned, Ned Stark and Littlefinger's, like, their, their initial interplay. That's not what it was over. He's already fucking up the analogy. But, like, all right. I mean, I've read this thread probably three times. So <laughs> we'll, we'll keep going. Well- I mean, like, well, the thing with Littlefinger is, like, you know, he, he's, he, he clearly wants to paint Crowder as the sort of Machiav- the evil Machiavellian genius who you, like, you know, kind of have to respect. But he says, like, he knows that winter slash war is coming. I mean, it's not that he knows war is coming. Littlefinger is actively starting the war himself to benefit from it. It's not like he's just like, oh, I can feel it in my bones. The war is coming. Like, he is an active agent in scripting the, uh, break, you know, the, the breakup of the uh, Seven Kingdoms. So does that mean that he, he doesn't like, he's like, he's a bad guy? I never really get where, 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 Jay, where Whitlock himself uh, comes down on this. Although he identifies, the thing about identifying the White Walkers, it's like, first of all, big tech, hilarious. Second of all, what, what, Littlefinger didn't give a shit about the White Walkers. This has nothing to do with him. No, he never had any. He never t- had any time for the White existed. Walkers. He was just doing his schemes and shenanigans. Uh, so continuing on, uh, he says, uh, "Jeremy D. Boring, as mentioned above, is Lord Eddard Stark, hand to the King of the Daily Wire." Okay, Ben Shapiro is Robert Baratheon. Uh, Jeremy Boring is <laughs> Eddard Stark. Uh, Jeremy has far more ego than Ned Stark, but in Littlefinger's mind, Jeremy is every bit as naive, thinking he can work with big big tech and maintain conservative values. No one's trying to work with the White Walkers. That's not a faction. Doesn't this entire thing is poppycock? But okay, if big tech is the White Walkers, like why are you doing this on Twitter? (laughs) <laughs> it's like if every character in Game of Thrones, they were like, wait, I have to tell I have to tell this to everyone. Let me go beyond the wall. <laughs> it's like if if, if like uh, three quarters of the factions in Game of Thrones, their entire like the thing they were mad about is that you didn't let them be beyond the wall. That's it. That's the only way this analogy works. I've been so, shadow banned uh, beyond the wall. <laughs> <laughs> so the analogy is, is this is we're only two, tw- we're only two tweets into this thread. The analogy is already uh, more tortured than a victim of the uh, <laughs> victim of uh, the Boltons, the, the, the flayed men. That's how I feel reading this. But OK, but this one is very much on point. Uh, I thought a second ago uh, Ben Shapiro was Robert Baratheon. No, according to Jason Whitlock, Ben Shapiro is Bran Stark, eventual king of the Six Kingdoms. Ben has unexplained superpowers that allegedly allow him to see into the future, except when it comes to the milk of the poppy vaccine. Winterfell is Israel, a standalone kingdom run by his sister Sansa, (laughs) in parentheses, Brett Cooper. (laughs) Uh, For those wondering, is Brett Cooper? Brett Cooper is not the prime minister of Israel. Uh, (laughs) Just some other conservative media guy. But okay, so like Ben was... I can sort of buy this one because Ben was he was given a disability um, 
pretty like at a pretty young age he was circumcised that gave him superpowers that like would tell him that Obungla would be a bad president. I I think this one is apt because uh, like Bran, uh, Ben is an annoying, ugly little bitch who everyone hates. Yes. Uh, there, yeah, there, there, like, there was everyone who, either reading the books or watching the TV show. Everyone, everyone was just on the edge of their seats going, can we get back to Bran's plot line, please? <laughs> but uh, the, the other, I mean, this honestly, I think should be chiseled into a wall somewhere. But uh, just the phrase Winterfell is Israel is <laughs> what I mean, like this is what I mean. Greatness is back. Winterfell is Israel, a standalone kingdom. And again, for that to be true. <laughs> for for Israel to be a standalone kingdom, uh, they wouldn't be getting all the money that they do from our uh, I don't know Casterly Rock or something like some bullshit like that. There wasn't a storyline in the in the books or the series about like tourists from Winterfell behaving badly in Essos. <laughs> <laughs> Every character wasn't like, oh great, uh, d- 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 here here come the uh, Winterfell people like on holiday again. <laughs> Yeah, some more, some more northern tourists. They, they burned down another one of our heart trees. Oh well. Uh, also, Winterfell uh, is not a kingdom of all it, at all. It's a fucking castle, dumbass. The North is the kingdom. Well, I mean, it, it, as the thread goes on, it, 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 it's 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 not even clear whether Jason Whitlock even likes Game of Thrones because I mean he's, he has some editorial uh, input here. But uh, going on, uh, Donald Trump is King Robert Baratheon. Once a great warrior, King Trump has gotten sloppy and more vulnerable than ever to his many enemies and rivals. That one, I think that one is, uh, that one's legit. I, I can see the Trump, Robert Baratheon comparison. That's the, probably yeah. the best analogy in the entire thread. Yeah. Yeah, I'll buy that one. <sighs> okay. Now, now we get into people who are like, I don't know, like, I guess Candace Owens is part of the Daily Wire, is she? I don't know. Yeah. It says here, uh, Car- Candace Owens is Cersei Lannister. Stunning conniving and power hungry sensing the fall of her political husband trump in parentheses she's devised a plan to empower herself i like that he says that she's stunning just like cersei (laughs) she's a stunning sexy lady uh matt walsh is jamie lannister a noble bad guy walsh and owens playfully feud over social media to conceal their mutual admiration so i guess they're fucking they're fucking and nicknamed the drag (laughs) Uh, <laughs> uh, nicknamed the drag queen slayer, Walsh's true affinity is for pe- protecting the little people. In parentheses, Tyrion. <laughs> okay, who's and then, Tyrion? And then, he, and then the next. Oh, you're gonna <laughs> vomit when you get to the Tyrion part. <laughs> so he's protecting the little people. Elon Musk is Tywin Lannister. Musk believes gold win wa- gold wins wars, not soldiers. The great patriarch of social media. A Musk always pays his debts. That's that not is true definitely at all. not true. <laughs> that, no, that's, that's completely, completely not, not true. They paid their fucking rent in their fucking offices in like three months. Seth Dillon is Tyrion Lannister. The who the fuck are the these leader people? Of the Babylon- Seth the, Dillon? The Babylon I do not even guy. know who this guy is. <laughs> yeah, he's the Babylon B guy. Uh, this is the part that, um, well, I considered dialing nine one one to commit suicide by cop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. So he's uh, the, Seth Dillon he's Tyrion because he's so hilarious. Yeah, he drinks and he knows yeah. things. He's very quick witted. Oh yeah, part is uh, Seth Dillon is Tyrion Lannister, the imp. The leader of the Babylon B camouflages his intelligence with his quick wit. Even Dillon's haters love him. I was definitely quick true. wit I'm camouflage gonna... intelligence. That doesn't even make sense. <laughs> <laughs> a quick wit does not camouflage intelligence it broadcasts it yeah yes Fucking literally moron so i do i think this is like the turning point in the thread like i feel like these people are not even sort of intentionally like, related right well i think like this is a turning point in the thread because i think this is like he was very into it and this was sort of like the apogee of how much in of how into it he was and then he realizes how he sounds and that it's already been up for like 30 minutes and he get like people will just repost it. So he's like, oh, I have to like make like self-aware jokes about like I, I have to sort of like laugh along with the crowd about how much this sucks now. <laughs> well, he, he did the important thing, which was uh, explicate the beef between Steven Crowder and Jeremy Boring. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. and before he really got to, goes off the rails, he just had to get in there that he thinks Candace Owens is stunning. Right. Okay, so here's how I'll explain the contract dispute. Um, Matt Walsh and Candace Owens are, si- are brother and sister who are fucking. 
<laughs> That's the core of the contract dispute here. Okay, n- next up on our, our casting call here, Jordan Peterson. That's right, Jordan Peterson. He is Varys, a wide sage with an array of sources and information who places protection of the realm above all else. <laughs> so again, Jordan Peterson does not have a wide array of sources. He has his own fucking brain in his book, yeah, Maps he's of just Meaning. Riffing I've never at seen all times. reference anyone else's work. He's I read mean, zero I, books. It's amazing. I mean, I guess it, they're both like castrated, one metaphorically, one literally. <laughs> I would like to see him bald, though. Let's see if you could pull that off. Uh, next up, we have uh, Alex Jones is Stannis Baratheon, the rightful heir to the conservative throne. Facing character assassination inside a courtroom, Jones Jones told the judge, go on, do your duty. <laughs> <laughs> this is, yeah, uh, yeah. The, I mean, that is Stannis and Alex Jones, both stoic. Uh, really into the letter of the law, <laughs> you know. Alex Jones, not really like a performer type. I mean, he was he was uh, he was under siege in that courtroom until um, lowly uh, lowly Davos Seaworth, the nootropic knight, sailed into the into into the castle with uh, a bunch of brain force ultra mega gorilla mind, and they fortified them for the rest of the siege of Storm's End. <laughs> Uh, next up, we have <laughs> this one is really good. Joe Biden is King Joffrey. At 3 a.m., <laughs> Joffrey's mother destroyed uh, King Robert Baratheon's ballot, naming Ned Stark protector of the realm, making Biden president. Weird and sadistic. The legitimacy of Biden's rule is questioned. So, so wait a minute. Candace Candace Owens, Candace Owens is Joe Biden's mom? <laughs> it stole the election for him. And Joe Biden, um, I guess, is committing crossbow rape. <laughs> Yeah, I, just, I didn't know he had it in him. Yeah, Candace Owens is his mom, and oh, Joe Biden is his dad. Or no, I'm sorry, uh, that because it's it's not actually his kid. Uh, it's Jamie Lannister's kid, so that's Matt Walsh. So Joe Biden is the <laughs> child of Matt Walsh <laughs> and Candace Owens. <laughs> that is Sarah. There, that is Sarah. Cro- Sarah Cotter Chronicles timeline fuckery. That is just so confusing. That is, I cannot keep this straight in my mind. And I also love the uh, I love the impression of Joe Biden as a as weird and sadistic. And it's like, look, uh, so it's really the po- the policies of Joe Biden and the Democrats, I think, could fairly be described as weird and sadistic. But Joe Brandon himself, I mean, he does not give off uh, Joffrey vibes to me. You know, like he he master no. Picel. I mean, they're, they're, that's the comparison that's just sitting right. Yeah. There. Oh, yeah. He's, yeah, he's like a, perfect, a, you know, just sort of like a grumbling courtier who's just been in the system for so fucking long. And then he's just like the last one there to take a seat when the music stops. That's master Picel all the way. He's not a good guy. But weird and sadistic does not strike me as as the the Joe Brandon uh, you know style. Yeah, uh, Joffrey Joffrey is like I mean a willful character, and Joe Brandon is probably the most led around man in the world. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, next up is a guy I've never fucking heard of. Uh, he just lists him as at Alex Stein ninety nine. Do you guys are familiar with this guy Alex Stein? No. No. Yeah. He this says, is he's too not- deep in conservative <laughs> lore for me. <laughs> it just says. I'm looking at his bio here. It says cat maximalist and a host of conspiracy castles on Blaze TV. Well, whoever the fuck you are, Alex Stein, you are now Braun, a mercenary for hire who kills while making you laugh. Always down for trial by combat. <laughs> okay. Wait, I'm just looking at a photo of this guy here. Oh God, he's laughing in the he's laughing in his photo, but he looks like he has a real pinched d- doe face. I don't, I, he does not look. Like, yeah. He's uh down to kids. Always down for trial by combat. He is. He's uh, a lovable up, murderer. Uh, next up, and this is where uh J- Jason. I, I like just the little interjections of horniness in this. Uh, he says here, Kamala Harris is Roz. Roz slept her way from Winterfell to King's Landing, all the way to King Joffrey's bedroom, where she was murdered by a bow and arrow. <laughs> Okay, yeah, that's the th- that that's the thing that like Joe Biden is gonna kill Kamala Harris. <laughs> he's, gonna, he's, <laughs> he's gonna make he's gonna make her beat Pete Buttigieg to death with a bat in front of him. <laughs> uh, then next up, we have Brittany Griner is Brienne of Tarth, the most heroic, virtuous, selfless, and courageous non-binary person in all of Westeros. Griner ascended to Lord Commander of the Kingsguard after smuggling hash into the Iron Islands at the behest of Joe Biden. This is just truly 
I, like it, it, he, he's this gone is the from, thing like, where you get too jokes, mad, to fully losing his mind. Yeah, you get too mad. You remember the things that piss you off, like freaking Britney Grinner getting out of jail and leaving our precious troop in there. And then you got to get all fucking. You got throw the whole thing out just to just start bitching about it. Although I, it is nice to know that Russia is the Iron Islands. It's like uh, I didn't know you guys were so big on the Ukraine war because if Russia is the Iron Islands, you're basically arguing that it should be wiped off the map. Because that was what they always should have done to the fucking Iron Islands. Just awful. Well, Get, just sink that shit. <laughs> I will take I, I will take issue with um, one aspect of the lore here. I would say the Iron Islands, if there was such a thing as like, you know, uh, contraband or hash oil, if you were trying to sneak, let's say, milk of the poppy into one of the kingdoms, the Iron Islands, I think, would probably have the most liberal drug importation policy. I don't think that's something they're that pirates they drown you it's for. Pirates. Yeah. <laughs> uh, next up, <laughs> Tommy Laren is Lady Marjorie Tyrell, obsessed with fame, fortune and power. Lady the Marjorie fuck is married Tony her Laren brother's been, boyfriend, by the way. Is she at any, well, I mean, anywhere? She got, I feel like she just fell off of the fucking map. Well, I mean, he, she he did says fall here, off. Lady Marjorie married her brother's boyfriend, Renly, King Joffrey and King Joffrey's brother, Tommen. She eventually pretended to join the High Sparrow religious cult. I, I don't know what the, the Tommy Laren equivalent of this. I don't know what he's... He's just describing the character of Marjorie Tyrell. There's, there's no... <laughs> yeah, no, that's the opposite of what happens, kind of. Yeah, yeah. Cersei... Like, well, she doesn't join the cult, but she tries to use them for it. Just it's all over the place. Uh, next up, we have uh, Clay Travis. Clay Travis is Theon Greyjoy. Abandoned by his political father, Al Gore, Clay became a ward of the Starks, eventually betraying them. Captured, tortured, eunuched, and renamed Reek by Ramsay Snow, Clay struggles to find an authentic identity. Is eunuch the word? Can you eunuch someone? Or I don't know. It's, it's pretty. You got eunuch. <laughs> Which is good to know. Got, but, uh, you... <laughs> Clay Travis has literally no. Dick the, wait, balls. Sorry, remind me who is Clay Travis again? He's, he's another sports guy. guy. He's another guy who he's was a, like a sports a dude who then became super political and a right wing. Like wrote about sports, how is he? U- how is he eunuched? I I have no idea. Uh, this up. is getting so deep into the fucking uh, <laughs> the the internecine struggles. This is all like shit that he's like seen in fucking slacks and stuff, and now he's tweeting it out to a public audience. of absolutely baffled onlookers uh next up we have greta thunberg is Arya stark an impossible to believe media creation the tiny fantasy heroine slays the night king thwarts global colding and stands as a symbol of girl power see like this is where it got confusing to me because Arya is like one of the great heroes of a song of ice and fire like she's a a fan favorite certainly one of the most heroic characters in the books but he's saying that like she's bad because her character represents girl power and the unbelievable contention that a woman could uh, best a man and bladed combat. Also, though, she fought the White Walkers, who in his telling is big tech. So he, she should be a, uh, good then on his side. Yep. Again, just thinking of people that you're mad at and then just throwing them in there <laughs> and thinking of the characters that you're getting mad at and. The entire world building collapses. Yeah, I mean, any of these analogies, like, they have the structural integrity of a regular lawn chair under Jason Whitlock. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Only only a few more to go here. Thank God. Uh, Next we have uh, Tucker Carlson. Tucker Carlson is Jon Snow. He has king's blood, but chooses to be champion of the Night's Watch. Rising Back to dick riding. Yes, right back to just, oh, God. Just absurd dick riding. (laughs) Rising to Lord Commander of the men maintaining the wall at the border. Uh, He's like, yeah, I just want to let you know, Tucker Carlson, you're a personal hero of mine. Uh, Then finally, finally, Jesus Christ. Thank fucking God. Governor Ron DeSantis and Carrie Lake are Viserys and Daenerys Targaryen. Conservatives are anxiously waiting for the Targaryens to take back the Iron White House throne. Ron DeSantis also married to his sister. <laughs> I whatever. And like, I don't okay. Care. And and who who is Carrie Lake gonna get pimped out to to get like an army of horse lords <laughs> to retake the white iron throne? Yeah, who's he did he's he is not named Khal Drogo. I've noticed that. <laughs> yeah, him. He's thinking yeah. that's me, baby. <laughs> My son and stars. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> He's referred to as my sun and stars because he has the same gravitational pull. Folks, <laughs> ah. that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Boom. Uh, and then finally he says, guess that makes me George R. R. Martin. I'm still all still working out on how this will all end. Stay George R. Word Martin. Please, Jason, <laughs> please. <laughs> please, more of this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, George R. R. Martin. For this, that's that's really it. I mean, <laughs> I guess like if I saw you both inside profile, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> only the only the Greek fisherman's cap would tell the, would be able to tell the difference. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Matt, um, uh, look, uh, as good as this thread went, there were some there were some great replies to it from Whitlock's fans, none of whom have seen Game of Thrones or has any fucking clue what he's talking about, <laughs> even less than I do. And they're like, uh, Jason, gotta say, I love all of this. Don't know what you're talking about, but I'm gonna look into it right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna be like Felix, where it's like, I'm not even gonna watch the show. I'm just gonna read the lore just so that what? I can understand what he was saying. I hope they have as good of a time as I did. <laughs> And like you know, Jason Whitlock, he's clearly he's clearly a TV watcher, not a big reader. So like, Felix, when when you were doing your own version of this for fucking for fucking uh, Jacob Wall and fucking Berkman at CPAC, you were pulling you were pulling the deep cuts like Young Griff. Yeah, they're and, younger and John than John Connington. Connington. John but no, Connington. no, Jason Whitlock does not know about John Connington. Oh no, or any of That's those stuff. He has no, no idea. No, he has, yeah, he doesn't even know the TV stuff that well. He sucks. Yeah. Very bad. Very poor performance. Yeah. He's never done the dance of clicking out of all three of the pop up ads that you get when you go on Wikio. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jason Whitlock, man, like, he, he's great. I don't know, like, whether he uh, uh, backed into being a conservative pundit or just ended up there because of all of his, like, many uh, bitter uh, life um, disappointments and uh, petty spite that he uh, bears inside of him. But. Dude, this guy was talking shit about Damar Hamlin the other day. Like, this is a guy who's just desperate for any kind of attention. He was just like, oh, I bet he's going to make a lot of money on his Oprah interview. Now that he's not playing football anymore. And it's like, Jesus Christ, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. Uh, Jason Whitlock, ladies and gentlemen. The, the, the Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. I think that's the first time we've talked about him on the show. Yeah, I know I we mentioned so. him like in the distant, distant past, probably. But he's he's quite he's quite a specimen. Yeah, <laughs> indeed. <laughs> I'd say he's more of the uh, Illyrio of um, the, the free city of Lys. Or no, what, what is it? The city's from? Well, it's from I'm, Pentos. I'm blowing it, Pentos. Yes, he's more like Ma Ma Meister Illyr Illyrio because he's Magister really Illyrio. Jesus Christ! <laughs> <sighs> blowing it. Uh, well, <laughs> I'll just I'll, I'll end it there before I disgrace myself any further. Yeah, seriously, very embarrassing. Gentlemen, till next time.